Good afternoon. So, uh, it's a tiny bit early, and uh, let's get started anyway. So this is a uh, session on um, physics in Africa, and the real speaker is uh, Omolulu Kinojo that's here. But I'm going to take my few minutes to say something about the school I've been involved with, ASESMA, and, um, and uh, it fits in with what uh, he will say. But, but I wanted to give a little background and some, some uh, parts that's orthogonal, uh, I think, to what Omolulu will say. So, first of all, I want to uh, say that this is something I believe that, that all of us can feel. Um, theoretical physics is equations and it's much more. And, and we all can appreciate that. Uh, we can appreciate Walter Cohn's uh, fingers into this. He, in fact, was one of the people on the uh, International Advisory Panel. He was one that was quite active, made suggestions. And uh, I po point out in particular the two institutions that were most important in, in initiating and funding uh, SESMA, the ICTP and the uh, IUPAP, the, which is the organization that covers all of uh, the national organizations for physics, and they were endorsed a um, Oh, I, sorry, I forgot that I wanted to say this next. And particularly, I wanted to point out that one of the supporters is the Thomas Young Center. And here's the, the contact person that I that I contacted several times. I didn't know him very well personally, but I got to know him through his his interest and and through his um, humanity. That that he really supported uh, um, the uh, the efforts of Assessma, and he got people at the Thomas Young Center involved, and they were just marvelous supporters all along. Now, to get back to what is assessment, I should um, give you a little information, especially for people that, that haven't heard of this before. It is a 10-year program that was endorsed by the IUPAP, the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics, and, and the, the, um, uh, the, the goal was, well, the, the means was to have a school every two years with the idea that you build up a research community. And, and that means more than just a school, but to try to be involved uh, continuously and help people come together. So we're at the end of the two year, uh, 10 years, and now we're at the stage for, um, for the next uh, cycle for what to do. This is an opportunity to build on what's been done, so I should say something about what's been done, and build up something that can be larger and more effective, and the idea is to do something that will make a difference. And uh, there are new developments that, that have come along that can really, uh, we can work with. For example, the East African Institute that Omolulu will describe. So, what is it? It's the... Um, built on the idea that computation is important. And you can do computation that relates, that brings people together from different fields of research. And, it, and it's uh, something you can do without that much uh, equipment, like, like experimental physics. The choice of topics was density functional theory, because that's something that's, that's uh, so useful and, uh, and uh, has real fundamental physics all the way from the beginning up through applications that, that can bring people together from different fields that, that are involved in, in the uh, applications or in chemistry. There's many things that we can, can uh, relate to. The idea is to have something that's small enough to be a community and something that's large enough to have, have effect in other fields. And a typical two-week school is something that would have lectures and information on, on um, methods and the things that would, would uh, help people uh, enter, whoops, uh, well, enter the field. And, and as well as hands-on computing, there would be a full um, part of this the first week and then the second week oriented on projects 
that would really involve ideas and, and computation of, of things that what, uh, at, a, at a research level that could uh, continue after the school. And to say a little bit about how it started, why did it happen? The, the, uh, there was a workshop in South Africa on this very subject organized by Nithya Chedi Foremost, who was in South Africa, Sandro Scandalo and myself. And that was the place where Nithya in particular, and Sandro, I assume, realized that a, that a series would, would, is a thing that could help bring people together. So that's what uh, got proposed and endorsed. And the ICTP has been just totally important in this for, for supporting it through funds and through people like Sandro. So the jobs were apportioned. And the reason that I'm standing up here is that I've been a person that was, was uh, getting lectures and in, involved people uh, in Europe, United States, and Asia. And, and so I'm sort of the face of assessment to, to a lot of people. But it's the other people that do the, the real work and the, uh, what assessment is all about. One thing I just want to point out, that an innovation was mentors. Young people are postdocs, uh, students are postdocs that, uh, that can come, they can help uh, the, the uh, participants of assessment to, to um, you know, just much better than just sitting at a lecture to have someone that you can talk to. And this is, this is one of our things that can involve young people, many of you in the audience, if you, if, you, if you want to be involved. Okay, so here's what's happened over these 10 years. There have been schools in each of these places. And um, uh, so the idea is that we cover sub-Saharan Africa, and up to now there have been 201 individual participants from 22 different countries. And the, uh, many of these uh, have been returning, and the idea is that that's how you bring people into the field and how you keep um, a field going. And, and assessma is people. This is, a, this is uh, the illustration of things that's larger than just theoretical physics and theoretical equations. So there are many people from assessma here. Well, everyone who has a, been a participant at assessma at any time, please stand up. Ah, oh, look. <laughs> well, anyone who is a, has been a lecturer at SESMA at any time. Anyone who has been on an advisory board for SESMA. And there's in the back. It's exciting that you, you are all here and you have made a difference. So, um, the, the first people who stood up, the participants, are of course the important ones, and they're the people you can talk to to see if, if, if this is making a difference or not. So there's a great advisory board. I just put that up just so you can see, uh, and if, if these slides are available, you can see the names. Uh, and, and I want to say, this is the committee that's in, in, in charge of, of now this uh, starting the new 10-year period, or oh, excuse me, the new period, which may be 10 years, but it's long-term, whatever it is. And one of the things that you can see from, from this is that the people, just look at their faces. They're friendly. You can see that they are, are you know that they're people that are dedicated, you know, from, from the other things you've seen. And uh, they involve uh, young people, people middle age, where there's people that are not on the picture that are, that are um, more senior. And, and uh, at, at all the stages that, that um, people can be involved and this is going to go forward for the future. So just to leave one more thing, uh, at the last meeting, I, well, I was looking for pictures to show you, and and I uh, looking through through the, um, you know, thumbing through on the computer, and I found a, a tweet that one of the mentors had sent out that was showing uh, how many computational physicists does it take to use a projector, and there is me 
Obalulu, who will be our next speaker, and, and Nicola Seriani, who is the, the chair of, of, of Assessma going forward. So there you are. I, now I have the opportunity to, uh, to introduce the real speaker of this session, uh, Omololu Akin Ojo, who is the head of the East African Institute for Fundamental Research. And that's an exciting development. Uh, but he has a lot more experience to share with you. So Omololu. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, good afternoon, everybody. So I'll be talking to you about total energy and forces in Africa. And um, I'll start by showing this slide where um, we have like 54 countries in Africa. Um, I'll quickly highlight um, a few countries, Sudan, Ethiopia, Rwanda, um, Sudan, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Nigeria, and finally um, Rwanda and the efforts we are doing in Rwanda. Um, so like, it's difficult to talk about total energy and forces in Africa without talking about SESMA. So it has been going on for the past 10 years, as Richard mentioned. Um, so here I just show a picture from Assessma in 2012 at Kenya. Um, this one is a mini Assessma um, that was head of Sudan. They've had at least two in Sudan. Um, like Richard said, one of the things that typically happens is you have people um, practically instructing people and showing people how to do this computation. So it's not just somebody standing in front and lecturing, but there are hands-on sessions that they have. And this is the recent one that happened in Ethiopia um, and putting up a sign. Um, so, so far, Assessma has been a success. There have been a total number of individual participants of 201. So meaning of these 243, some um, came more than once to the program. And a good number of lecturers, a good number of mentors have been involved in this. And the good thing is um, quite a number of papers have been published by people that have been participant at assessment. Um, so I'm not saying that through assessment they published these papers, but they came into contact with assessment and in their future they publish these papers. Some of them with um, their contact with assessment, some of them with their contact with other people. Um, and about 22 countries um, in total have been part of assessment, so living like um, 32 more in Africa. Okay. Um, in other places also, people have been doing computational work in Africa. Um, so here I show a slide from 2018 that happened in Nigeria with Professor Adebayo, who is here, um, Professor Kratzer from Germany, and actually um, Dr. Waid Adiago was also there, instructing people on um, computational methods. And then also recently there was one that happened in Tanzania, which is part of East Africa. Um, a student, Daniel Shadrach, was there, and then Elisa Fratini, who used to be a postdoc here, and Hassan Ali, and quite a number of people. And I forgot to say, this one had support from Volkswagen and from ICTP. So ICTP gave funding, and some of the personnel from ICTP, like Hassan Ali, helped um, remotely, actually. Um, this one, Hassan Ali was there, and so some money came from ICTP and OEA. Um, so one of the things that happens is when you have this kind of programs, um, it's good if they lead to a sustained research culture. Okay? But unfortunately, not all the time does it lead to a sustained um, research group or culture. You have to really push things to have um, sustained research culture in these places. So it's not enough to just have the classes and leave. Um, Assessma tries to do that by um, getting these mentors to keep in touch with the um, participants 
and to keep working on projects. So this is very important. But it's not in all cases that you have a sustained research and culture or sustained research group. Um, a few things in Africa that um, prevents this is many of the people that are lecturers and maybe they come for assessment, they have a high teaching load. So if you have to teach a lot, then research suffers. Um, there's limited access to journals, although in some ways that's improving. There's low computational power. Um, and this one we are directly addressing, limited training. But we also need to address the issue of limited collaboration. Okay? So one of the things that we are doing in Rwanda is to set up an institute that will help to address these problems and even go beyond. Okay? And really um, meet a lot of needs in Africa. Um, so we are setting up this East African Institute for Fundamental Research. Um, it's funded by the government of Rwanda, but is supported a lot by ICTP. So we are um, a partner institute of the International Center for Theoretical Physics. Um, so ICTP gives us funding um, for our students and in terms of personnel and equipment and books. So we are grateful to ICTP. Um, University of Rwanda also helps um, because there are many rules we need to abide by. So they help us with procurement, they help us with um, accounting and things like that. So the institute is a category two UNESCO institute, meaning it's governed by UNESCO rules, but it's not funded by UNESCO. Okay? Um, so we're grateful to UNESCO also. And I, okay, so this is the building. Um, in, is in Kigali, Rwanda, very safe and very nice place. At 1 a.m. you can walk on the streets, no problem. 2 a.m. you can walk on the streets, no problem. Uh, for now, we occupy the top three floors. Uh, we hope as we grow to occupy the next floor and the floor after that. So we really want this place to be a hub in Africa for science. So a science hub for Africa, where people come in from all over the world. Um, and it should, we want it to be a place where people come in from the developed world. They come in and they interact with people um, in Africa, even at this place. So this is one of the things we really want to happen there. Um, for now, our goal is to carry out research and make important discoveries for African development and advancement. Um, Make this to do this research and make these discoveries, we want a lot of collaborations, both within Africa and from outside Africa. So, and we also are having a strong uh, visitors program where people from within Africa can come, visit, um, do research with us. And people from outside Africa can also come, visit, do research. The good thing about Rwanda is you can just pack your bag today and fly to Rwanda. You don't need a process to get a visa. You get there, you pay $30, they let you in for 30 days. Okay? If you want to stay longer um, for 90 days, you pay $100, but then they give you the advantage you can go to Kenya without a visa or Uganda on the same visa. So it's good um, and it encourages a lot of visits and collaboration. At the same time, we are training uh, masters and PhD students to carry out research and make important discoveries for African development and advancement. And then we also have workshops and short courses. Um, workshops in data science, machine learning. Um, workshops in solar cells. Um, any kind of workshop related to science. Uh, um, because we are part of UNESCO, we also have this idea of promoting um, gender equality, and so promoting women in science. So in October, we had a Women in Science workshop. Um, Shobana was there, and it was a good program. So we have these different workshops that we'll do throughout the year. In, this, in essence, it will be like a mini ICTP, but in Africa. Okay, so this is um, the goal, where everybody could come together, do important research. Um, we'll try also to give back to the community through outreaches. So we have master students now, 10 of them, five from Rwanda, five from outside Rwanda, and they're excited about doing outreaches to secondary schools. Um, that is important for us from a selfish point of view because we want to have a steady stream of young people coming in to do science. 
but also um, our students will help them to do well. So, in everything we are doing, we find that we are actually addressing quite a number of issues in the sustainable development goals that many countries agreed to. Um, definitely quality education is something we are pursuing. Um, to have a master's program and a PhD program at the highest level. Um, we also strive for gender e equality, so we really um, have programs that are geared toward women. So actually, last year there were two programs that we had. OWSD in March had a program, and then in October, then there was this Women in Science workshop. Um, and then from our research, we expect to address problems like clean water and sanitation, good health and well-being. Um, clean, affordable and clean energy, and climate action. Um, things to help the climate. Um, so one of the problems we will solve um, with research is this problem of um, cooking fuels in Africa. So now I'm telling you a bit of the problems we will solve in Africa. Um, so many people all over the world, like three billion people cook with biomass. Um, the fumes cause a lot of death. It's equivalent of smoking, it's maybe like two packs of cigarettes every day or something. So, uh, and it robs girls of school time. So there's, I, ha I have ideas on how we could possibly help to create hydrogen gas that can be used to do this. But this is one of the issues that need to be solved in Africa. And the problem of water also, um, purifying water in Africa is a problem to be solved also. And actually these problems you can solve them using computational methods, okay? So that's the interesting thing. Um, health problems are also problems you can solve using computational methods in Africa. So this is the work of a student um, that I had um, in Nigeria before I moved. And working on cisplatin is an anti-cancer drug and he was studying how the drug binds to um, different proteins. You can do this research to um, functionalize a drug so that it acts in a certain way or it doesn't act in a certain way, and also to reduce drug resistance. So he was working on that. But later on, the hope is to work on neglected tropical diseases, and you can do all these things computationally. Um, use quantum chemistry methods uh, to develop um, drugs or to study the mechanism of drug actions. Um, a long-term thing would be to also um, work on superconductivity. I had a student who was working on superconductivity before. Um, superconductivity will help to make better MRIs, um, cheaper MRIs actually. But unfortunately, my student, he got poached by Michigan State. So in August, he left for Michigan State. It's a good thing for him, and good thing in general for Africa. Um, for me, okay, I'll look for another student. Um, so I'll tell you really about one of the problems in Africa and how a little bit more details on how we are solving it um, at the Institute. By no means, this is the, uh, these are not the only problems that we are working on at the Institute. I'll show you some other ones that we are working on. So this is the world at night. Um, generally. Um, okay, don't worry how the picture was taken, okay, but how the picture. But the interesting thing is North America is bright, Europe is bright, this parts are bright, it's really South Africa. And my vision is to make it into something like this, okay? So there's a way we can do it, and that is by gathering the power in the daytime and using it at night, so solar cells. So, it's important to make cheap, efficient solar cells. And one could think, why don't just take the whole Sahara, put solar cells there, and it doesn't matter whether they're efficient or not. You have a large area, and then um, distribute the energy. But there's a problem, and that's the problem of distribution. Okay. Um, in Africa, many people did not have phones when it was landline, but when it became cell phones and you could have one everywhere, it's like everybody has one. Even in Nigeria, they have two. Like one cell, one line works, and the other company may not be working and stuff like that. But 
the thing is that when it's distributed, many people can have it, and this is one thing we hope that can happen. Um, for that to happen, you need to capture the right amount of um, sunlight, the right part of the light. So you need to have a material that has a correct band gap so you can tune the band gap. But you do that, it's possible to do that using um, quantum dots. And to make the quantum dots that you want, you can do calculations to really find the um, band gap of this material that you make. The problem with, um, I'll show you this. The problem with um, quantum dots is that um, it's hard to know the band gap and the absorption spectra that you get um, for a given size, shape, and even the matrix of the, um, the material, okay? So for instance, silicon has a band gap of 1.2 electron volt. That's the bulk one. When you nano size it, it's hard to know whether you increase the band gap or decrease it. If you want an optimal um, solar cells, you need to have something that has a band gap of like 1.4 just like gall gallium arsenide, okay? Um, and then you can also put solar cells in tandem. So here, if you have only one junction solar cell, you have an efficiency of 34%. But if you put many of them in tandem, if you put two, you have 42%, 49% all the way to 68%. You can achieve that by using materials of different band gaps, okay? The good thing about quantum dots is that you can tune the material, change the band gap by changing the size the shape, but like I said, number, it's hard to know what band gap you'll get um, with the different size and shape. So one thing I'm doing with this student, um, his name is Ezekiel, is to be able to calculate the absorption spectra for big um, systems, oh, sorry, for big systems. So the highest we have done now is on a single processor, we can calculate the absorption spectra for a material that has 779 atoms, silicon, cluster that has 779 atoms. With TDDFT, you cannot. Well, unless you work in a national lab in the US and you have all this computer power to use. But in Africa, we want to be able to do this. Um, so our goal is actually to, so on this axis, I have the effort you put in. On this axis, I have the accuracy. The goal is to be able to um, put in little effort, computational effort, but have very high efficiency, uh, um, accuracy, just like you have for UMCCSD that Frank spoke about this afternoon, this morning, and GWRB SSC method. TDDFT I'll put around here. Um, there's a semi-perical method that is, has low accuracy and low efforts, but um, I showed this picture, okay, partly because I like Dirac, very intelligent person, but also, um, and then I learned that he was here. There's a circus named after him. But well, one of the things he said is that we know all the laws of chemistry. And the only problem is that the exact application of these laws leads to equations that are too complicated to be soluble. So it becomes desirable that approximate practical methods for applying quantum mechanics should be developed, which can lead to an explanation of the main features of the complex atomic systems without too much computation. Okay, so this is one of the things we aim for. We don't have a lot of computing power, so we think a lot. And we are able to do something that is useful and helpful. Um, so what? So here I show a slide on UMCCSD, just like Frank um, showed earlier. Um, I won't go into the details, but this is the Hatchy-Fock wave function, and this is an excitation operator, and then you do no excitation, one excitation, and double excitations, and this will give you this wave function with um, excitation up to double excitations. Then there's also this um, configuration interaction with singles. It's equivalent to TDHF, time-dependent Hatchifak, but in the Tandakov approximation. So in that case, you only have um, the ground state plus single excitation. That's the reason why I'm showing you this. So what so like uh, Frank said in the morning, this is very expensive. UMCCSD actually goes as n to the sixth, okay? Um, because this is not CCSD of T. So um, you double the size of the system, you have to apply 64 times the same amount of effort. So what we have done is to parameterize the semi-empirical model. Um, so F is the fork matrix, C is the um, wave vector 
and E is the energy. So we parameterize this um, Hamiltonian, but based on EUMCCSD results. Okay, this is the um, call Hamiltonian, and this part depends on the density and some integrals. Okay, this is the Coulomb integral and this exchange integral. One of the th so this method is called INDO, intermediate neglect of um, differential overlap method, and it actually helps you to be able to calculate the energies of big systems very cheaply. But you need to do a lot of parameterization. One of the parameters is like this gamma AB that you have to parameterize. Um, this U mu mu is also a parameter you have to parameterize. Um, the way INDO does the savings is first you use frozen core. So if you have silicon that has 14 electrons, um, the 10 electrons are frozen, and then you only have valence orbitals, 12 of them. Use a minimal basis, that saves a lot. You also neglect integrals systematically. So three and four center integrals are neglected. And then to incorporate electron correlation, you parameterize the integrals. Then on top of this, we now do CIS, okay? Um, so what we did was for two silicon atoms at different separations, 1.4 angstrom to three angstroms, we calculated the excitation energies, okay? And the excitation energies at 1.6 angstroms and at 1.8 angstroms, we calculated its excitation energies. And then we parameterized this so that the Indo-Hamiltonian together with CIS reproduces the um, excitation energies. These are the parameters we got, not too important. Um, so the fit gives us a mean absolute error of 0 0.2 mm -hmm. electron volt. Um, this is the UM, UMCCSD result, and this is the semi-empirical result. Um, and then, remember, we only did this for UMCCSD for two um, atoms. And then we checked how well our method does for three atoms, for four atoms, and five atoms. And we find it's pretty much um, um, transferable. Okay. This is Zindo, um, Mike Zerner's Zin method, but without any extra parameterization. Okay, this is the method we use now. So OE is um, optimized energy Indo method. Okay, so we get this result. Our results are worse than B3 leaf. So this is the difference between um, the excitation energies, average difference between the excitation energies and UMCCSD result. Our results are worse than TDDFT, but this just takes like seconds to calculate, okay? TDDFT would probably take a few minutes. Um, similar results here, and then we're able to calculate the absorption spectra also. And then this is a system with some 79 atoms, and we're able to calculate the absorption spectra also. What we find is actually that as you nanosize the system, the band gap actually goes to zero. Okay. So for silicon, the band gap drops, which is not something you expect. And then we can also get the density of the first excited state minus the ground state and other excited states minus the ground state. Okay. Um, so at the institute, we expect what we want to do is to create a culture where people think a lot and carry out a lot of scientific work, okay? We want to establish a scientific and thinking culture. Um, my goal is that by, in 10 years time, counting from the beginning of 2019, we'll have like 100,000 people all over Africa that think deeply and work hard, um, meaning like 2,000 in every country, okay? By the end of 10 years to do that. We need collaboration with the international community to be able to do uh, with deep thinking, we hope to be able to achieve the results of Einstein and Dirac. Not just individual people doing that, but um, like 2,000 people in every country doing that, um, looking for mathematical beauty, which will ultimately usually lead to physical results and derive new laws and understand the universe, create new devices. Um, here I show the... Um, somebody that's familiar to some people here. So his name is Dr. Machado Muso. He works on um, high energy stuff. So he works on the origins of the universe. This is something we'll do um, in, at the institute also. It's important to do things and let people think also about it. So for instance, when there's an eclipse, it's not two gods that are fighting. And it's just 
um, natural things happening, and it's important for everybody to learn this. And we can even predict the next fight of the gods because you can always predict when the next eclipse will happen. Um, we already have a PhD program uh, by research, and these are details I can give later. And there's an MSc program also by research. You can give details later in high energy physics, condensed matter, and solid earth geophysics. Um, so how can you contribute? Um, uh, we would really like you to come join us to visit. If you want to visit, um, you can send me an email, and then we'll talk, and then I can send you an invitation. You come, you, ap um, you appear at the airport, you get your visa, you come in. Um, later on, you can go see the gorillas. Actually, seeing the gorillas is expensive, okay? <laughs> but, um, but it's good to come and then the other thing also is um, for our students, we need scholarships for them also. So it would be good if, we, if you know any funding agency that will be willing to help, okay? So I would like you to come join us and visit us um, anytime you could. The year has just started, so you can plan and come to see us. So I'd like to show you a video at the end. The video will take exactly almost Africa's huge population of young people has the potential to solve global problems, including those that are prevalent in Africa. Many of these problems can be solved through science and technology. Physics represents an important bedrock of these solutions. At the ICTP East African Institute for Fundamental Research, we focus on using physics to make significant contributions to Africa. At the same time, we train others to do the same. The ICTP East African Institute for Fundamental Research based in Kigali, Rwanda was established to address Africa's need for better physics education, training and advanced research. Rwanda's policy of advancement through science makes it the natural location to host a world-class physics center. The institute is located at University of Rwanda and is a vibrant international science hub aimed to become the most important physics institute in Africa. The institute offers a rich program of international scientific conferences, schools and workshops, some in collaboration with top international physics institutes. It will also act as a node for various physics networks in Africa. The Institute's educational and research offerings include Master's of Science and PhD degree programs in physics, postdoctoral fellowships, a visitor's program that attracts world-renowned scientists to develop research capacity among African scientists, research investigating condensed matter physics, geophysics, and high energy cosmology and astroparticle physics, workshops and short courses to build capacity in Africa. The East African Institute for Fundamental Research is a partner institute of one of the world's foremost leaders in theoretical physics, research and education, the Abdus Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics based in Trieste, Italy. ICTV was established in 1964 and since then has contributed to the development of many scientists and physicists, receiving more than 100,000 scientists over the years. The East African Institute for Fundamental Research receives generous support from the government of Rwanda and is part of that country's science and technology ecosystem. It has been designated a UNESCO Category 2 Institute in recognition of its important role in building scientific capacity in Africa. Join us in our efforts to build a prosperous future for Africa through science. We have time for a couple of short questions.